Hi everyone, it's Yuri. My hair is kind of a mess, so it's gonna stay in this cute little scrunchie. I took a short break because work has been really busy and I've been trying to film my videos during the daytime where there's better light, but clearly it's nighttime right now and I figured if I keep waiting to be able to film during the day, I am never gonna upload another video or at least it'll be quite some time before I do. So here we are, hopefully the lighting is Okay, clearly there's a ring light right here and I have a new cabinet behind me that most of you have not seen unless you've been following me on Instagram. This is one of two different IKEA greenhouses that I have built recently. The other one is over here next to my desk. So my desk is like sandwiched in between the two IKEA cabinets. I wanted to talk about how I plan on building a Kind of like a living wall it's basically just going to be like a wall of moss tied back to something and i'm going to start growing some plants in it so that it can cover this back wall here you can see the shades straight through because the other side is also glass in this cabinet and i just want the backdrop to be a bit more green and a bit more filled out and also the other thing about these cabinets is they're really really good at maintaining humidity and some people will put actual humidifiers inside their cabinets without a humidifier right now it is 89 percent humidity in this cabinet so i don't really think i need one it's kind of overkill at this point to put a humidifier in there and it also takes up precious space within the cabinet where i could be putting another plant instead so my idea was that i could probably put a living wall that is a bunch of moss and the moss can be resting on top of some Leca clay balls and I can fill it with water and have it sort of be auto watering and then attach some plants into the wall and then wait a few months and see everything grow. So that's my plan and there's a few things I'm worried about. The first thing is the humidity. So it's really humid in there and having a wet moss wall and reservoir is going to make it even more humid. That is what I want in there, like I said, but I have fans in there for circulation and I'm afraid they're not strong enough to circulate things enough so that there isn't mold growing rampant on this moss wall. So I'm going to try this out and see how it works and if it looks like there's way too much mold growing then I will probably get stronger fans or have to remove the living wall or put it somewhere else so alrighty so here are the materials I'm using for this living wall the first thing that you need for a living wall of moss is the moss and I'm using some leftover spag moss it's mostly full actually and it dehydrated which is why it's so small and you're supposed to rehydrate it with water it still might not be enough but this does expand quite a bit so i'm gonna hope that i can make this wall with just this otherwise i'll just like only fill part of the wall and then i'll add the rest later after i order some more of this and by the way i will link everything that i'm using today in the description below the only thing i'm not going to be able to link is going to be this next thing that I showed you. So I have a moss and I just spilled the moss. Um, I have the moss and the next thing that I have is basically this black garden mesh. A lot of people use this for their moss poles. So I bought a roll to make a moss pole but honestly I couldn't keep that moss pole wet for the life of me so that's why I'm trying to do this self-watering wall. But it's just this thing I got at Home Depot and it's plastic, which is important instead of metal so it won't rust. And yeah, so this is going to be the front of the wall and moss will be like where my hand is. And then I need a backing, ideally something that is also not going to rust. So a lot of people will use just like thin, flat plastic, things like polycarbonate, poly probably something is what it's called but it's this thin plastic sheet essentially and I did not get any instead on my last Ikea trip when I got these cabinets I saw these drawer shelf liners and of course it's waterproof because it's supposed to be so that you can like put different 
cups and things after you wash them even. So it's sort of this like clear plasticky thing, but clearly this is not wide enough to match all of it. So I'm going to use duct tape to basically turn this into a big enough plastic backing for my wall. So those three things, got my duct tape. I was going to use Gorilla Glue actually to glue the pieces of the clear plastic together, but I can't find it. So I'm going to try the duct tape. Duct tape is awesome for almost everything. So it's probably going to be fine. And the last thing that I need, actually I need two more things. Second to last thing that I need is this container. I bought one that will perfectly, I measured correctly, it should perfectly fit inside this cabinet. And I'm going to put this on the very back of the cabinet and the wall will stick inside and be in here. And then the last thing I need are the clay Lekka balls. They will fill here and hold the wall against the end of this. I might zip tie it as well, the wall to this bucket, but we'll see. And I also don't think I have enough Lekka balls. So we're going to just like try our best with what we have. And if I need to add in some additions, I will probably do an update video, especially to show you all how it worked or if it didn't work. But anyways, those are the things I'm going to go expand this moss and grab some Lekka balls and um, start taping this up. So be right. All right, so I have whatever I had left for like a clay balls. I'm not sure this is gonna be enough for this project. Uh, I do have some perlite otherwise that I could try. So yeah, I, I, I think I'm gonna stick with these clay balls. If anything, I'll just purchase more. I bought these on Amazon and one thing that I do want to mention, if you're thinking of buying these for hydro or even to replicate this project, you probably want to cut some holes in the bottom of the bag that you get it in. It comes in this plastic bag. Um, you want to cut some holes in the bottom and then cut a hole on top and just run a hose through it and um, really try to drain out the clay dust that's in the bag. So don't make the holes in the bottom too big because you don't want the balls to also come out of the bag. You just want the clay dirt to come off so yeah just a heads up there's a lot of it and even after you do that there's gonna be some that you need to rinse out if you want to keep things clean so just letting you know now um i think i'm gonna just need to smush around the moss to really get it to absorb okay so i'm gonna measure out how big this thing needs to be Why am I using the tiniest scissors I own for this video? I have no idea. But I'm too lazy to get up. So we're just gonna do this. Okay, now I'm going to duct tape this side, and then the other side. So now I need to attach the backing to the mesh, and I'm realizing that I was gonna use duct tape to do it, but my duct tape's silver, and the rest of my cabinet is black, and the mesh is black, so really it would be nice if I had a black outline where the tape is but rather than wait until I get black duct tape I'm going to duct tape it with the silver one and then I have this black athletic tape that I'll just cover over it and if it doesn't work this should be easier to take off of the duct tape and maybe I'll get black duct tape and clean it up so that's my plan right now or maybe I should just have the silver and then get the black duct tape which I know will work instead of using I 
I'll think about that. I always think about those wallets that people used to make in like elementary school or maybe junior high with duct tape. I had some friends who would sell them for like 10 or $15. I thought they were pretty cool, but I didn't really need a wallet, especially one made of duct tape, so I never asked or purchased one. I don't really have a reason for one now, but that's what duct tape reminds me of. So I did all three sides and then I left the bottom open so I can push the moss up into it. But this is the frame for the moss and I'm hoping that the moss stays up. I'm a little bit concerned that it won't, but we won't know until we try. So I'm gonna take the moss now and shove it up to the top and try to fill basically this top section, right where this where my hands are, up to the top. I'm hoping this is enough moss. If it's not, I'll just have to refill it some other time, but here goes nothing. scratching myself up on the ends of this mesh. My hands are all red. Well, I'm more than halfway through the moss I have and this is all I got. So I definitely needed at least two of these and I'm not going to be able to finish this project tonight. So So I think I definitely need at least two more of those bags, uh, maybe even three. <laughs> well, that did not work either. I think it'll work a lot better when all the moss is filled, like this one row held it together and is fine. I'm also probably going to add some stakes inside to have it stay up because it gets too heavy when there's wet moss inside and then the plastic grid is just not strong sturdy enough to stand up straight and then obviously the backing is floppy so I'm gonna make some adjustments but I will be back so it's the next day and I went to the local nursery to get more of the moss that I need and some more clay balls and they are completely sold out so thankfully uh, I live near a vivarium vivarium so I was able to buy a bale here's the bale and I can continue on with this project y'all this is a disaster <laughs> I'm gonna have to rethink this and figure something else out so I'm gonna go and figure it out. I have enough moss, but I don't know why I thought it would just hold without any support. So I have made some progress and what I ended up doing was put another grid on top and then tied them together. So it worked out for this test side. I'm gonna finish it off on this side as well. I'm just tying it with some string. That's this cabinet. I thought it'd be cool to just stick plants into the wall and have it grow. That way trailing plants like this monster dubia can just keep going all the way up and continue to make big leaves. There's a lot of runway to go. It 
was a good idea, but for a variety of reasons, I've decided that this moss wall needs to go. I'm going to repot all of my plants and redo this cabinet without a big moss wall in the back. And I want to tell you why. There's a lot of humidity in the cabinet. I know it says 82% right now, but it's because I opened the cabinet for a bit. It's normally 95% and higher. And as a result, even the fans that are in here, I could use stronger fans, I could put more fans in, but I think this moss wall is just spreading the moisture out. And there's always water on the cabinet over here as well. It just stays super damp. This means that it's really easy for fungus to grow. Recently I've been noticing this layer of mold. Um, I think some of it is fungus spores because I see it kind of attached all around. And maybe it's just mold. I don't really know how to tell it apart. I've seen mushrooms growing out as well, so, you know, there is some fungus in here. The moss also had a bunch of grass seeds, so that's why there's just grass overrunning the entire moss wall. I could have pulled them out. I thought they were kind of cool in the beginning, but now they're pretty, pretty huge. So it's going to be hard for me to pull them out of the moss. I really wanted to grow this Milano all the way up, but the problem with a lot of these philodendron is that you'll see that there's some grow light burn, but there's this weird texture on the leaves, and it's because it's too humid in this cabinet, and I can't release the humidity enough to where this is happy. So my plans to grow this Milano chrism up the wall don't even work. The other problem, if you can see the little moving white dots, is that there are just bugs everywhere. I don't know if it was in the moss or if it's in some of the soil, but there's just a lot of crawling mites. I think they're mostly mites, but I also have seen some flying bugs, and I do see some silver nymphs running around in the soil here. Most of it is soil mites, which are harmless. They help break down the soil and they're supposed to be good for the most part, but there's so many soil mites in this cabinet. Anyways, it looks really cool, but I think it's time for me to change it up and make it easier on my life for pest management. So I'm just going to clear out everything and then unfortunately because all of the soil has so many pests in the pots, I'm going to have to repot everything and try to figure out how to get rid of all the bugs. So this is going to be kind of hard for me to take off because they're attached to the wall is what I wanted, but no, I don't. Yeah, that was pretty easy. So it only had one little root sticking into the moss, and these smaller ones, and some like, uh, okay, cool. I'm editing this video a few months later and honestly this is so much work but it was definitely worth trying and I hope that you enjoyed watching me build my living wall and then tear it down almost immediately. I'll see you next time!